In this video, I'm going to talk about Postman test scripts. So I'm going to show you how to write tests and uh, how to use dynamic variables and how to pass variables between requests in collection runs. So let's go back to Postman and uh, let's write our first test. So let's go to uh, the first request here and uh, let's hit send uh, to make sure that's working. All right, so I'm gonna click on test and I have a lot of uh, these snippets on the right side here. So these are provided for free, All right? So uh, let's, let's just look for the one that we want here. Um, all right, so status code is 200. So let's, let's add this one. So you can see that just by clicking it, it's written the test for us. So here we have a PM uh, dot test status code is 200 and it's doing the assertion that uh, the response has a status of 200. So now if I run this again uh, and then go down here, you can see the test result one out of one has passed. Okay, so, so the, the test has passed. Now, uh, let's just change this to something else. Let's say uh, uh, request status 201, right? Um, now, if I send this request, you can see that uh, the, the test failed because it's, it's not no longer a 200. So uh, the assertion, it failed. All right, so let's uh, bring this back to 200 and then hit save. All right, so now our test is uh, is green again. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and um, uh, add a test to this one. So let me send, and I can write a test here. So how should we test this one? Let's just uh, let's just do a two hundred. Okay, so let's save that. Um, Let's go back to the first test, and I think this would be, I think this is a, a very useful one here. Uh, it says, response body contains string. Okay, this is a very useful test. So oh, let me undo that and then create a new line here. And then do, click on this. And um, this was the hello world. So I can just say, oh, just make sure that hello world is in response. So let's send, and then you can see that two out of two tests have passed. Okay. Um, all right, let's go back to to do. Uh, I think we're okay with this one. Uh, let's go to get to do. Let's change the order of these requests here. So let's create a to do first. Okay, um, and yeah, let's let's create the to do first, and then after we create it, let's get that to do. Okay, so um, let's see, and then also this is a good chance to demonstrate the dynamic variable. So I'm gonna show you uh, how we can do that now. So I can say I want to pass in. So I can pass in a random value, so starting with the dollar sign. And then uh, there's one that says random BS. So uh, we'll see what that generates. And then this one, it can be a random Boolean. Uh, okay, and then I'll save that. And let's hit send. All right, so it looks like it created it for us. Okay, so let's go and write a test for this. So let's go to test. And first, let's uh, say we want to test the status code. So let's make sure that it's 201 because we're getting back 201 created. And then we also want to um, 
do a JSON value check. Right, so let's do that. Uh, okay, so you can see that it generated this test for us. And so we're gonna rename the test and say, um, uh, has uh, ID, all right? And so now we're now we have our JSON data, which is this, and then we can do a pm dot expect JSON dot ID. Okay, let's dot two dot uh, exist. Okay. And uh, let's let's run this and, and see if that passes. Okay, so it's failing. Dot to exists is not a function. All right, so the issue was uh, I needed to do this uh, to be a number. So if I send, then we verified that an ID was returned. Now, what if I want to save that, that ID as a variable so that I can use it in the very next request? Uh, well, to do that, I can do a uh, pm.variables.set uh, and then I can say, um, I can set to do ID to uh, JSON data dot ID. And now uh, in the scope of the collection run, uh, this variable will be available for any subsequent requests. So uh, to use this variable in this request here, uh, all I have to do is, um, let's see, I guess we already have this as a variable. So, uh, so if I do, if I do the uh, collection run, it should pass it to this variable here. Um, let's go to update to do. And let's also change this to to do ID and hit save. And let's go to delete to and let's also change this to a variable. All right, uh, let's try the collection run. So I'm gonna go to run collection and I want to run all of them this time and I'll hit save responses so I can see the result of my collection run and then run. All right, so it looks like all of them had run successfully. Um, so let's take a look at this. Okay, that says hello world. And uh, let's go this one. Okay, those are all my to do's. And let's go to create to do's. Um, all right, so you can see that this has an ID of 23. That was the one that we created. If we go here and we go to request URL, uh, it looks like it's still using uh, another ID. So I'm gonna have to, to fix that. So let's go to get to do detail and found the issue so I just have to get rid of this pre-request script that I uh, used earlier so I'm gonna get rid of that and then save it uh, because that was overriding the variable that I'm setting here all right let's try the collection run again okay and I go to create to do um, and then go to the body here. You can see that we created a new to-do 
with an ID of 24. And I go down to get to do detail, look at the URL, then you can see that it's using the ID that I just created. Uh, let's go to update to do, and you can see it's updating uh, ID 24, and then delete. Um, you can see that uh, I am deleting to do 24. So using variables, I was able to chain my requests together, right? And uh, after after the collection run, that variable is is gone. So it's it's no longer stored anywhere. So that that is the nature of the local variables. Um, one other thing that uh, you can do is actually set. So if I, if I want to cache those variables, right, and then we'll actually want to see them. So one thing you could do is just use the collection variable, right? So now this will actually get saved as a collection variable and it will persist between collection runs. So let me show you what I mean. So let's go back to our collection and run it again. Okay, so it just ran everything again and it created a new to-do, this time with 25. Uh, and now we're using 25. But if we go back to the collection and go to variables, you can see that the collection variable was updated to 25 because collection variables are persisted between collection runs, but local variables are not persisted between collection runs. If you're finding these videos helpful so far, please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.